Hello subscribers, hello others, David Hoffman, filmmaker, with a clip from 1958, June 10, 1958. I'm running it right now at the time of the coronavirus pandemic. It's scaring the hell out of us. I'm at home, sequestered with my family, people all over the country, in other countries, sequestered. You may be watching this at a time when there is no coronavirus, there is no pandemic, and you may not even remember what this was. But think about it as a time when, while I'm at home, I'm thinking of other times in my life that were scary. I mean, the virus out there can get me. And because I'm an old guy, it can kill me, apparently. 20% of the people who get it my, my age die. I mean, this is scary stuff. So it's 1958. I'm in high school. I'm a junior. And we're going to have a national civil defense drill at 10 o'clock in the morning. Sirens sounded. We jumped out of our chairs and ran into the hall. Why didn't we go to the basement? There was no basement in the Long Island schools at that time. Everybody's covered over like this, head, feet all crowded up. I look up out of the corner of my eye and I look at the girls who are all up and down the halls who were wearing bobby socks, which were very sexy at the time. Not supposed to look up. Teacher says, look down. Put your, put your head like this. Tens of millions of Americans went down below ground in this drill to prove to the Soviet Union, the Russians, that we could survive a nuclear attack and react and fight back. Nuts is how we grew up. Scary is how it was. Kind of like now with the virus out there that's going to get me. So I'm about to run this memory. And you're going to look at it and you're going to say, wow, that was a pretty scary time. This is a pretty scary virus, if you believe it can kill you, which I believe it can. That was a pretty scary time where a nuclear weapon could be dropped on my city and kill everybody who didn't run in a basement and hide. Some people had sand cans. They were supposed to use them, I don't know, for what. Some people had fallout shelters. This is a person down the street from me who had one, and he built a whole huge thing in the ground for his family. That was a time, 1958, June 10, if nuclear war was coming, Americans had to be prepared for it. On June 10th, the Office of Civil Defense conducted a national drill to test our preparedness. Tens of millions of Americans participated. The most rigorous test of America's civil defenses, a simulated hydrogen bomb attack that strikes at 75 key targets from coast to coast. Enemy aircraft are over the illusion. Total disaster. The drill had two purposes. To show us how to protect ourselves in the event of nuclear war. And to show the Soviets that we were strong enough to survive a nuclear attack and fight back. Nike missiles around New York are raised into firing position. United States prepared for war. At 10.35, the banshee wail of the siren echoes the warning. And the city prepares for survival. Keep your radio tuned to this frequency. There is a traffic plan for the evacuation of the city. All cars in the downtown area must follow the green light. Walk, do not run to your nearest shelter. Walk, do not run to your nearest shelter. New Yorkers have been conditioned by practice alerts. They know what to do. Turn off your electricity and gas. Fill pots and pans with water. Obey your civil defense wardens. Meanwhile, from the Pentagon and other key points, top defense figures are airlifted to secret control centers where they would direct America's defense and counterattack. The Soviets also produced civil defense films to convince their citizens that they could survive a nuclear war. The films told Russians how to put on their gas masks and how to tamp down radiation by hand. The same like in the United States, they taught us what you have to do. And we have the joke that if you will see this bright explosion somewhere on the sky, you have to fall on the ground, put some uh, white material on top of you, 
and slowly crawl toward cemetery. And the question, why slowly? Because you must not create the panic. Well, individuals apparently have been reluctant to build shelters. Do you think the government's going to ultimately have to take care of this? Well, we have, we have, uh, we have submitted such a program, as I say, within the executive branch of the government. However, I would urge individuals who can afford it to build shelters and build them right now. This is the home of Jim and Carol Sweet. They are one of seven families in Washington, D.C., which has a bomb shelter in their basement. It's a concrete dome type of bomb shelter protected by this three-quarter inch steel door. And uh, Jim and Carol are inside now getting a bunk ready. Uh, Jim, is there room for one more in there? There is one in there. How do you come in? Backwards? Frontwards? Does it give you a more secure feeling? Yes, it does, because uh, I know that no matter what happens, at least I've got some place to go to, and I have some place to take my children, and I don't feel like I'm just going to be sitting there waiting for something to happen with no protection whatsoever. And I don't think that it would ever come to them just saying, either you surrender or we're going to bomb you. But, uh, no, I, I wouldn't rather surrender them because they're atheists and they have a godless way of life. 